All right, hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to take a look at some of the drills we do to reinforce leverage with our football players on defense when we are tackling the ball. Make sure you check out some of our partners' game strat sideline replay system we use at Bishop Kenny High School. I use it at my previous school. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, with great customer support, check out Game Strat Dome Hats, a headwear company we use at Bishop Kenny High School and with Play Fast Football. Completely customizable. You go online, design your own hats. So if you want the ability to make your own hat, make sure you check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods company we use for our coaches' gear, players' gear. Our uniforms are distributed through them. Um, our sideline gear comes from them. We do some stuff with our fans and our teachers here with, with some online stores. So make sure you check out Baker Sports. Just play the, uh, it's the playbook software we use. It's the only drawing tool I use when I am diagramming anything, not only with my program, but on my Patreon site or anytime I'm going to talk at clinics, I'm always going to use Just Play. It's a unique teaching tool that gives you the ability to quiz your players on your playbook and your game plans, and you can use videos and diagrams and the quizzes are real easy to generate, real easy to understand. So make sure you check out Just Play. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. We have three uh, in our weight room at Bishop Kenny High School here. Uh, it's perfect for in-season, off-season, skill development, working on striking. Uh, it's elbows in, thumbs up, where your eyes go, what your hips do, all the things you need to do to become proficient at striking. All right, so it's in-season, off-season. Do it without needing a partner. Make sure you check out Difference USA. So. One of the things that we do every single practice, coming out of flex, all right, it doesn't matter what day it is, it doesn't matter um, if it's an offensive day or a defensive day, it's Monday through Thursday for us, even on some of our game prep, all right, we'll, we'll take a chance and we'll do it, uh, is a drill, we call it sprint shimmy, okay, uh, it's basically however you would teach your kids to sprint and come to balance to make a tackle, right, so you know, one of the big things in tackling to me in the game of football nowadays is everybody is creating so much space. And on defense, tackling gets worse and worse the more space there is between ball carriers and defenders, right? So one of the most important skills that you can develop tackling the football is closing distance, learning how to sprint and then come to balance, right? So we do a sprint shimmy drill where Every player, and, and I've got five drawn up here, normally we do it with eight bags because we do it with varsity and JV, they're all together. We don't differentiate between the two. They all come from flex, straight to the drill. The coaches are on one side, the players on the other. The players are about eight yards away from the bag. Whistle blows, every player is gonna sprint to close the distance to the bag. Now this is the important part, all right? You don't want to you know, get to where it's all about near foot, near shoulder, right? And it's all about that shimmy position and how to come to bounce. But to me, the first most important part when doing a drill like this is you've got to teach kids how to close. We've got to take air out. We've got to close the distance if we want to become better tacklers because distance is, and space is our enemy All right, on defense or special teams when we are tackling the ball, especially when you're playing some really elite skill players. You don't want them all right, with a lot of space because they will make you miss more often than not. Right, so. The sprint part is the first part, and that's why we do it at the beginning of practice. We don't do it when they're tired. We do it straight from flex. It's, it's also a, you know, part of, kind of part of your dynamic warm-up. You're coming straight from flex out of your dynamic warm-up, and then you're getting into this you know, movement right away and some short area uh, bursts and quickness, right? So you all sprint, and go, the head coach will say, hey, right foot. All right, so right foot shimmy. So we're all going to sprint, and when we get to the bag, one of the things we got to make sure is the players have their right foot up, and their left foot back as they shimmy down the bag, right? So this is a sprint to the bag. And then when I get to the bag, if it's right foot shimmy, I have to have my right foot up, my left foot back. I've got to sink, lower my level, drop my hips, all right? And then when they get to the end of the bag, the coaches are over here. I want to make sure as a defensive coordinator, when they get to the end of the bag, they're all in a proper position to strike. They've all got their face mask up. They've got the proper foot forward. All right, so if it was a right foot shimmy, and we're saying that the ball carrier is inside to our right, we got to make sure we have that right foot up, our face mask up with our helmet on the left side of the ball carrier, right? So we'll sprint, right foot shimmy, okay? And one of the first things we do early on, especially with, with younger kids, we start the drill before we ever do anything. We teach the drill from the bag. Put your right foot up, put your left foot back, shimmy down the bag, all right, and end up in a good position with your face mask up. We put them in a position, all right, here's where I want you. I want the right foot there. I want the hips down. I want the face mask up. I want the hands back. Whatever it is that you're teaching with your tackling, we start them from the finished position first. 
All right, and then once we've taught everybody what the finish position is, then we come back and we say, okay, it's going to be sprint shimmy. And the coach rips the whistle. Here we go. First group, they get out. All right, that group goes there. That group goes around. The next, next group fills lines in right away, whatever line. It doesn't matter. It's all the same drill. Get the lines filled in. Sprint, right foot, shimmy, down the bay. All right, so we'll start every practice with that, and we'll try and reinforce to the players the idea of closing distance taking air and space away from ball carriers, right? That's the first thing. Now, the second thing we do almost every day, if, and, and there's two variations of it. I'm going to give you both variations, all right? Starts off with two-man vice, all right? And what we are trying to do is we are trying to teach players how to leverage the ball, all right? So we're trying to teach players how to leverage the ball and send it back to a partner while keeping their helmet on the proper side with the proper foot up, all right? So they'll be... Four cones down. Okay, so there'll be four cones down. And when we start the drill the first time, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to start it with very simple, just a ball carrier right here. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll put dots down halfway in the drill, like a flat dot here and a flat dot here. We'll start with, all right, defensive players here facing the ball carrier. Okay. Early on, very simply, when we're trying to teach it, we tell this ball carrier, you can come to that dot or you can come to that dot, okay? And then when they get to that dot, they settle. We're not trying to make anybody miss yet. We're not getting advanced with the drill. We're trying to get the ball carrier to that dot. And now the defensive players are working down. So if the ball carrier came at me, I'm sprinting to close, and this should be a right foot shimmy. And now my partner is sprinting to close, and he should end up with a left foot shimmy. And what that does is it teaches us how to leverage the ball back to where our help is. But when we get to the fitted position, even before we ever talk about or worry about contact, it teaches us how to have the proper foot up so my helmet's on the proper side so that when two players are tackling the football, all right, you can be as aggressive as you want to be and keep the helmet out of contact. Right, because there's going to be several one-on-one -on -one tackles. Everybody works one-on-one -on -one tackling, open field tackling. It's going to happen all the time. But if you're playing really good defense and you're turning the ball back where you want it, or if you're playing really good special teams, you're going to be working in tandems and threes, and the ball's always going to be tried to be sent back to somebody else, whether it be a free hitter or somebody inside out, and I'm a force player and I'm turning it back in. We're always trying to work the ball somewhere, right? And we always try to teach our players, hey, We've got to know where we want the ball sent so that if you do miss a tackle, here's where it needs to be with the proper leverage so that we have help or we have you know, uh, the ability to get to the football. So the first thing we're doing is we're teaching two guys how to sprint to close based on the direction of a ball carrier, how to put the, how to put the proper foot up to get in that position. And then early on, one of the things we're going to focus on, when that drill stops, wherever that ball carrier is, we had better be in a good position, our hips better be low, our face mask better be up, our hands better be where we want them to tackle, and we better have the proper foot up. So right foot, left foot, okay? So that's the first thing we'll do, all right? And then the next thing we'll incorporate, okay, is we'll give the ball carrier the ability to make people miss. So now when he comes down, he can make one move and go in either, either direction, right? So we give him one move he can make, but now he can go in either direction. So we don't know the predetermined direction that he's already angled at. So now we've got to sprint to close, sprint to close, and based off the direction he goes, we've got to leverage the football, near foot, near shoulder, turn it back to my partner, okay, and, and work the drill that way. Then the next thing we'll do is we'll incorporate movement to it. So we'll start the ball carrier in the middle, and the ball carrier will be facing that direction, and I'll put a cone there, all right, and the defensive players will start All right, and these, they are facing opposite directions. So the defensive players are facing the cones down here. The offensive ball carrier is facing the cone down there. On the whistle, this defensive player has to sprint to this cone, okay, turn his hips back, locate the ball. He's got to sprint to this cone, turn his hips back, locate the ball. The ball carrier has to sprint to this cone, and now when he comes back, he can do whatever he wants inside the triangles to make players miss. And now what we've got to do is we've got to learn 
to sprint. We've got our back turned because we're sprinting to a cone. Once we get to that cone, you can work on the kids. If you want them to always open their chest inside, if you want them to always open the same direction, now you can work those mechanics to say, all right, look, you're going to sprint to that cone, and when you get there, I need you to open up back inside so we can get our eyes on that ball carrier real quick. I don't want you turning your back, opening to the ball carrier, turning your back to them, and then pinning yourself on the sideline here. All right, I want you with your chest inside, so when you turn back, you can locate the ball carrier. And now what we've done is we've created more space. So now that we've created more space, we've got to emphasize, once you locate that ball carrier, we've got to sprint to close the distance. All right, and then when we sprint to close the distance, at some point, whatever this ball carrier does, right? So this ball carrier goes to this cone and he comes back and he does whatever he does. Now we've got to close near foot, near shoulder, close near foot, near shoulder, and get the ball in what we call that vice position where we are sending it back to each other. We've got proper leverage, all right, and we are working on all the fundamentals of how to vice the football in a two-man drill. Okay, so we start grassroots, teach the drill first, very limited movement, very limited ability for the ball carrier to do exotic things. Then we put, all right, we give the ball carrier the chance to move a little bit, and then we put everybody in the middle and we incorporate more space and more movement into the drill, right? So it's taking the drill from the ground up, building it the way we want to build it, teaching it the way we want to teach it, and then incorporating all kinds of different things into the drill to make sure that we are doing all the things and emphasizing all the things we want to do in tackling, right? We're closing the distance, we're sprinting, we're coming to balance, near foot, near shoulder, vicing the ball, all right? Now, the last thing that we have done also, and this is something that we kind of worked on and, and I kind of worked on coming up with a way to teach our kids in-game scenarios, we then do a drill where we call vice fix it. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to start with a ball carrier here, all right? We're going to start with a defensive player, with two defensive players, all right? One is going to be up, let's say, 10 yards away, all right? And the defensive players are facing away from the ball carrier. The second defensive player is going to be about five yards behind that, okay? So five yards, and there's going to be another defensive player here, okay? On the whistle, this ball carrier can run and go whatever direction he wants between the two cones. The first defender has to turn and locate the ball carrier, all right, and now he's gonna sprint to close near foot, near shoulder of the ball. The second defender is gonna turn, locate, sprint to close, and he's gonna be the guy that now fixes it based off the leverage of the first player. So if two guys are working at the same time and we're working next to each other, all right, so if I have somebody, the camera's looking at me, this is my left shoulder. If I have a buddy on my left side, I'm always gonna be left foot up. I'm always gonna try and keep the ball on that shoulder pad, not let it get out here. I'm always gonna try and send it back to my buddy in there, right? That's perfect if the two of us are always in conjunction on a string together. Well, in football, especially special teams and, and defensive play, if one guy is sprinting to the ball and going to make a tackle near foot, near shoulder, whatever leverage he has, I have to fix that leverage so that if he misses or if he sends the ball a certain way, I've got to fix that. So if this guy were to come and take, let's say the ball broke this way, and he takes near foot, near shoulder leverage with his right foot, I've now got to sprint to leverage the ball with my left foot, near foot, near shoulder, and create that two-man vice. If for whatever reason, this player did a poor job, all right, if the first player does a, a poor job of tempoing the ball and tracking the hip, and when he closes, he ends up on that side. Well, now as the second player, I've got to close and end up behind him because I've got to fix it, okay? So those are some things that we do every day. I think leverage in, in, in tackling the football is very important. I think sending it to your help, understanding where your help is is very important. I think getting kids to be aggressive, you have to teach them how to keep their helmet out of contact with multiple bodies involved. Like when you do a lot of one-on-one -on -one drills, I think you'll get the kids that want to stick their nose in there. They're physical. You'll figure out the kids that aren't real physical right early on. But... Once you do that, when you put them in game settings or you put them in inside run settings or you put them in seven on seven settings or you put them in special teams kickoff or punt settings, now there's a lot of other people running around making tackles or trying to make tackles, being blocked, getting off of blocks. Now there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of bodies and we have to figure out how to leverage the ball, right? So those are two very simple drills that we use, two-man vice start at its basic grassroots and then we build it up from there and then a vice fix it drill with the sprint shimmy done every day all right so i hope this helps you guys uh get a better feel for some tackling drills you can do a lot of you guys are doing a lot of great things with your tackling tackling circuits all the time 
Uh, Tackling is a huge topic. It's, it's always going to be talked about on, in the game of football. Uh, number one, we've got to teach it safely. Number two, we've got to get to where we can be uh, more proficient at tackling because players in space, skilled players in space, is what's going to get you in a lot of trouble. Missed tackles, usually when you lose games, you chart it up. Uh, the biggest thing I can tell you is if you're charting missed tackles, chart the types of tackles you missed and why you missed them as opposed to just saying we had 30 missed tackles. We need to know, did we miss a profile, a roll, an angle, whatever, and then what technique should we have used, and then we need to come up with film clips to show that. So hopefully this helps you guys out um, with some tackling stuff that, that you can work on. If you have anything that you do that you really like, send it to me in a comment. Uh, I always like hearing those things. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, ring that bell, turn the notifications on so you know every time we do a video or we go on YouTube live. Comments are always appreciated. I love interacting with everybody. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the video or you don't like the video. Hope your off-season's off to uh, a good start with your learning. If you're an NFL fan, hopefully um, you know your team won yesterday. If it was, uh, if you've got Bengals and Chiefs left or if you've got Eagles and Niners, hopefully your team's still there. Uh, our team got knocked out. Jacksonville got knocked out. But great season for the Jags. Looking forward to the off-season. A lot of excitement in the city. So I uh, appreciate everything you guys do for me and play fast. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you next time.